guys we're looking at a york unit here at my cousin's house we did this house new construction it's a five ton from 07 it has an x13 fan motor in it if you can see that real good or not uh, this is the second x13 motor i've put in here this one's about a year old um, I'm going to show you what's going on with it. And York has a really big problem with their X13 fan motors. So, uh, let me hit the breaker here. You can see it's trying to start, but it won't start. These X13 motors, they start up on, they need 24 volts to start and they run on 208, 230. Um, I'm going to verify that we have a full 24 volts going to the motor, which I will do down here on the board. That's where the that black and white wire is where it receives its 24 volts. It receives its 208, 230 volt on that, under that purple, that bottom yellow and that bottom purple down there is where it gets its 240 so i'm going to verify that we have a full 24 volts going to the motor and uh that'll be the first step to checking this guys as you can see we have 26 volts feeding that fan motor which means that we have a bad fan motor again all right guys it's a couple days later here at my cousin's house we're back uh fixing to go slide this in place we went with a with just a psc motor his unit was out of warranty and i was not about to pay uh, uh i think they wanted like 420 30 something dollars for the x13 motor that wasn't gonna happen so we have us a three quarter horsepower reversible lead uh, just regular PSC motor. There's our capacitor, 10 microfarad capacitor. Uh, we're going to use high speed because this is a 5 ton. There's the condensing unit. We'll check the Freon on it after we get it started up, make sure everything's okay. Because the York Supply House told me that if I use this motor, it would not work. So we're going to go upstairs, wire it up, and find out. Okay, guys, we have our. PSC motor in here. Well, you saw it outside. There's the capacitor. Uh, this is the common that we have tied into this purple, which goes to the common side of the transformer. The yellow wire is the hot one coming off the transformer. We have it powering our relay right there. And I don't know if you can read that right there. The camera would focus for y'all. Can read that right there it says blower relay the x13 motor wired up down there so we're taking the yellow one feeding the relay and then our speed tap is here now all we got to do is start it up and make sure we got the right rotation i think the unit is calling for fan so let me start it up well as you can see guys we're operational and the yard store told me this would not work. Looks like it's working pretty damn good to me. So I'm going to button this thing up, get out of here, and we're going to go check the Freon for him just to make sure everything's okay. All right, guys, we got the air handler all buttoned back up. I'm going to go downstairs, get out this hot attic, and uh, go put it on cool. All right, guys, we've been up and running for a few minutes. Uh, we definitely don't have an airflow problem. But it looks like we might have a TXV malfunction. Or it might just be a little low on gas. Subcooling is in the neighborhood, but the superheat's way too high. So I'm going to throw a little R22 in there and see if I can bring that superheat down, get that subcooling 
subcooling closer to 10. We try to drop the superheat down in the t low 20s, the high teens, make me a little bit more comfortable. All right, guys, I haven't added any refrigerant yet. It looks like the superheat wants to start dropping, but I'm still going to have to add a little bit of charge. I had to end up buying me a new scale, guys, and I went with the CPS. I really like it. The field piece was nice. The wireless uh, feature was nice, but I just had too much trouble with it dropping signal. Uh, I, I, and I like this one a lot better. It's not as... Uh, it's not as sensitive as the field piece. I mean, the field piece, if you barely touch anything, it'll throw the weight off. So I'm happy with this one so far. So uh, I gotta zero it out and I'm gonna add a little bit of gas. Guys, after two pounds of refrigerant, I'm able to bring the subcooling up to 10. Superheat is not really wanting to fall very well. Suction pressure's not moving up. Superheat is dropped about a degree so and it's going back up to 26 so more than likely what we have here yep it's back up to 26 we have a fault we have another bad TXV I don't have any bullet pistons on the truck with me that's what York requires they use the same piston as uh, this is a York Infinity 13 sear uh, the, the evaporator is made to hold a TXV or a piston but they use bullet pistons just like Nordine. I don't have any bullet pistons on the truck, but it is cooling very well. I mean, the superheat, could, it, it could be worse. It's down to 25. It will cool, but I will have to come back over here and remove the TXV. I will not be putting another TXV in. I'm just gonna bring a bullet piston from the York store and uh, put a piston in it. But it, it's already dropped like three degrees. It was 78 in the house and it's like, 76 75 somewhere in that area two three degrees has dropped already it's cooling very well so i'm not going to add any more gas to it because i don't want to overcharge it after two pounds we should have seen we should have seen us a little change we like i said we're seeing a change in subcooling but we're not seeing a change in superheat so that's a classic sign of a bad txv so we'll get back over here when i have time to put a piston in it but the bottom line is, is that they're cooling they have they have air so all right guys that'll do it for this one uh thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed it and we'll see y'all on the next video